The home is insulated with fiberglass bat, and the problems with that become apparent very quickly. Um, we've got our uh, craft paper backing on the fiberglass, and then as we look down here, we can see that complete open areas that have no insulation in there. There's complete open areas that have no insulation in them. And of course, uh, I'll point this out too. These are these are wire penetrations. These should be foamed in, and uh, Actually, that, that's open to the other side, but they should be foamed in, such as down here, at all wire penetrations. We're keeping, we want to keep the house tighter, and we want to keep it well insulated. So you can see here, this is R19 insulation that they've laid on the uh, attic floor. We need to have R43. Uh, that's the APS standard. Uh, APS requires R43. Um, now this is nominally. R19, but really in reality, it's closer to R4. And the reason is, you can see this insulation is not touching the area it's supposed to insulate. We've got these pipes, we've got wires, and so on. It's tenting, it's creating a tent effect. So when I put this camera in here, you can see the gaps uh, between the insulation and the drywall. So I'm going to call for uh, fixing that by doing what's called lift and fill. That is uh, putting cellulose underneath the um, fiberglass bat and then insulating on top of it. That's going to keep the, the kitchen area, the uh, living room area, the, even the other side of the house. It's going to keep it cooler in the summer, warmer in the winter. Air, air conditioning doesn't run as much and it's more effective. This is a great video from our energy auditor, Jason, and it shows how the insulation is installed matters just as much as how much there is. A lot of people think the more the better, but especially with fiberglass bats. It's very important how it's installed, and that's what I want to talk about in this video today. And I want to show you another video from Jason on a different house where we have a knee wall scenario where we have these vertical knee walls, and you may have knee walls in your house if your ceiling changes in height from a vaulted ceiling to a flat nine-foot ceiling, or if you have uh, architectural features like uh, plant shelves, arches, and columns in the house. You may have these knee walls that kind of bridge the differences in ceiling height. So let's take a look at this video. Okay, we are in the attic uh, over the, this would be the southeast bedroom, no sorry, south bedroom. And you can see here the knee wall is exposed. This drywall is exposed. Um, the way that they the builder installed this insulation is he put it across these joy or these studs. The problem with that is if you put them across the studs rather than tucking them into the studs, you end up with a gap of about that much between the insulation and the drywall. Now in this case this has completely fallen. I think somebody climbing up may have put put some weight on it and crushed it down. But you can see the same thing. This is laid sideways, laid sideways, laid sideways and so on all the way through here. Um, we need to cut those and tuck them in properly in order to get this better uh, insulated. We will be able to hold our cool better through those uh, three to eight period, um, and that's going to make the house more efficient and uh, operate less as far as the uh, air conditioning. Jason does a good job at explaining the theory behind misaligned insulation. I want to go into a little bit more detail on how the gaps in insulation can actually kill its performance in this video. When I'm proctoring the BPI exams, I love talking about this subject because it empowers our auditors to actually know what they're looking for and sets them apart from just a regular insulation contractor or an HVAC contractor that has an insulation machine to actually know what you're doing, know what you're looking for. And where I live in Arizona, this is a huge part. We have a huge housing stock of homes built with fiberglass bats in the attic that are pretty much all misaligned. The homeowners are having major comfort issues. And even if someone actually blew more insulation on top of these misaligned bats, these homeowners are still having issues and they can't figure out why. And this is where our company comes in and we can really save the day here by diagnosing the right problem and the right solution. First, I wanna set up some definitions about a thermal boundary. And it's basically a boundary that separates the inside from the outside. Your interior conditioned space 
from the outside. Our garages in Phoenix are unconditioned. That's technically considered outside space. Our attics are unconditioned, and that is also outside space. The thermal boundary is made up of two things. You have an air barrier, which could be your drywall, your plywood, the slab, and the second thing is the insulation. These two things, your air barrier and insulation, are married together, and they need to be in direct contact with each other. So your insulation needs to be touching the drywall surface on the attic floor. The fiberglass bats need to be touching 100% uh, the drywall walls. If these two things aren't touching, your thermal boundary isn't going to be complete, and we're going to have misalignment issues. Our air barriers are going to be airtight, so it could be drywall or foam board, something that air cannot pass through. A common misconception is that insulation is an air barrier, and that's, that's not true. The craft face of a fiberglass bat is not an air barrier. Air can still get through it. It's not airtight. Same thing with loose fill insulation. Air will still travel through loose fill insulation. Through dense pack insulation, the air travels slightly slower, and it can act as an air barrier in some instances, but in our attics, we're not doing dense pack insulation. The ideal air barrier is going to be airtight, but I'm sure you can look up at your ceiling now and you'll see that your air barrier or your drywall is full of holes. It has a lot of can lights. And then inside the walls, you have electrical penetrations, plumbing penetrations, and vents. And when you put insulation on top of that, it creates a lack of a continuous thermal barrier. So even an electrical wire that goes down and has a big hole, you put insulation on top of that, that's a discontinuous thermal barrier. Bigger problems exist in Phoenix homes that are two stories. They have one air handler in the attic, and the ductwork that goes down to supply the first floor is through a duct chase. And once we go up in the attic, we can look down that whole chase and see down to the first floor. That's, that's a bigger air barrier. Also, we find a lot of defects in soffit vents, stairways, and around door trims or pocket doors. This is one of my favorite graphs, and it shows if you have just a 5% defect in the insulation, your R value almost gets cut in half. So if you have an R30 bat in the attic, but there's a 5% defect, 5% gap in that bat, your R value isn't good. You're not going to have an R30 bat insulation. You're going to have an R16. If you have a 10% defect, your R value goes down to 12 and a half. So you could imagine in these videos that Jason's showing, none of those fiberglass bats were touching the surface of the attic. So what's the R value to that? It's almost zero. It's like there's no insulation in these attics. And this is a common problem. Here are some photos where we're showing, we're showing the insulation contractor come in after the sprinkler system and wires have been run. They put the bats on top of can lights. We lift the bat up and they're right on top of studs or just bridge totally over a drop soffit vent. All those are major defects. When we run a thermal camera through the house, you can see these areas just light up in the summertime red hot. And it's because they're not protected and it's going to cause a room to get hot. It's going to make the AC run a lot more and work a lot harder than it has to because it's almost like there's no insulation in the attic. These bigger insulation misalignments are also over a lot of soffit vents, but they can also be over the plywood area, the walkway that goes to the air handler or furnace in the attic. Sometimes contractors forget to insulate under the plywood. And so how do we fix this or what's the proposed recommendation? What I train my guys in the field is, is that it's up to you. It depends how large the area is, how accessible it is, and what's the quickest way to do it. In this example, we have our drywall as the yellow line and we have a soffit right here and maybe two can lights. And our insulation is represented by the red line, and you can see the insulation is bridged over the soffit and can light. So what would we do in this situation? We can either move the insulation to align with the air barrier. So on our soffit, we would drop the insulation down and 
align it and strap it on these vertical knee walls and on the attic floor. Or option two would be to move the air barrier and align it with the insulation. So we wouldn't cut out the drywall, but we would create a new air barrier with polyiso foam board, drywall, any rigid board is going to qualify here as long as it's sealed and, and secured. And that's what we could do in option two. Here's an example of what we do for a small gap. Our guys will stuff some fiberglass bats in the small hole and then spray foam on top of that because the hole is just big enough where our spray foam will fall through that gap and we need some backing on it. And a fiberglass bat is, uh, is a good and quick way to do that. In this example, we have a large soffit, a large drop. We could put insulation on all these knee walls and insulate the attic floor here. Instead, we chose to bring the air barrier up and create a cap on top of the soffit and then insulate directly on that. In this example, you could see the bathtub going horizontally into the house. And so in this one, we also made a custom air barrier on the outside and capped it on the outside. And then we'll put fiberglass bats and strap them uh, to finish the insulation. Finding misalignments it can be tricky when you're just starting out, but you basically want to look inside the house, look for any soffits uh, around the bathrooms, hallways, kitchens. Any architecture feature is a red flag for our auditors, and you could go around your home and look for the same kind of things. Like I said, if you have a two-story home with one unit, the air handler or furnace is in the attic, Look for that open duct chase. It's usually going to be behind a closet in a dead cavity space between the hallway and a master bedroom or a guest closet that that duct chase runs down. You'll probably even feel that wall warmer than the rest of the interior walls of the house. And then if you're brave enough to go in the attic, you can start looking and doing some investigating by lifting up the fiberglass bats and doing some discovery of where the misalignments are in the house. And I'm still surprised when I'm doing audits at where these misalignments are and how frequently they occur. And when we're doing this in the field, the first option would be to pick the bat up and cut it around any protrusions like can lights or split the bat and shove it under uh, the wires or studs and put the other half on top. I'm not a big fan of doing this because it's pretty labor intensive and it's hard to work in the attic like this. Uh, another option that actually we prefer and we've perfected is the lift and fill method. And this is where we'll lift the bat up or remove a section of bats. We'll blow at least four inches of insulation under the bat to cover the stud, get around the can light, get under the wires, and then we'll reuse the bat and put it back on top of the loose fill insulation and then we'll blow another cap of insulation on top. So we create a sandwich in between the fiberglass bat with the blown in insulation. We've had really good results with this way and we've been doing this so long we've really perfected and pioneered this method in Phoenix. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something and be sure to leave a comment on where you found misalignments in your house either with a thermal camera, heat gun, or actually from a visual inspection in the attic. This has been David Burns with Green ID, wishing you happy savings.